Hey guys, my name's Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I'm going to take you on a teardown or disassembly tour of an HP EliteBook 840G8. I'll show you how to open it up and all the various components you can access inside. So first thing guys, power down your computer the correct way. Make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then going to flip it over to access your bottom case screws. Now you only have five screws here, three up top, two near the middle, and after you remove those screws, you're going to take a small, flat, preferably plastic pry tool. I say plastic because metal pry tools tend to scratch your case a lot more than the plastic ones do. So take a small, flat, plastic pry tool and then go across this seam all the way around the bottom case, all the way here, inside here, and slowly, gently pry off that bottom case from the rest of the computer. Now, as far as bottom cases go, this one wasn't very bad. This was an easy bottom case to pry off from other laptops that I've worked on. After you get the bottom case off, guys, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. Now, just as a side note, guys, whenever I'm working on a computer in my shop, I have it sitting on an anti-static mat. Either that or an anti-static bracelet. These are great ideas to avoid damaging your computer when you're working on it. If you need any help with tools or supplies like that to get into your computer and to make your work area safe, as well as any replacement parts, the batteries, hard drive, RAM, fans, any components in the HP EliteBook 840G8, I'll have a link up top, also below in, in the description. It'll be a collection of all the tools and supplies that I use on this project, as well as any replacement upgrade parts for this computer. Before touching anything in a computer, guys, I always consider it a best practice to remove or at least unplug your battery. So here's your main computer battery right down here. There are four screws holding this battery in on top. One here, one here, one here, one here. So all four battery screws on top. In order to get the battery out, you also have to take this speaker wire here. See how the speaker wire goes along the bottom of the battery? That's kind of stuck in there. So you gotta make sure that the speaker wire is not connected to the battery before you just go rip that battery out. You could damage your speakers. After that, guys, this is your battery plug right there. Some of you may have a black piece of tape over it. As seen here, when the computer was first opened, you may have to take that black piece of tape and just bend it back a little bit. But after that tape is removed, you can unplug this. Now, as with any wires in a computer, guys, try not to pull on the wires. Uh, put your fingernails on either grip there on that plug or a pry tool or a pair of pliers or something other than pulling on wires if you can help it. And you can just jimmy that plug right out of that port. If you guys are wanting battery replacement information, uh, this is a brand name HP model number right here, CCO3XL. Uh, the HP part number for a replacement is right down here, L77608-422. I'll have all this information for all these replacement parts below in the description as well. As a side note, guys, if you're replacing your battery with a generic battery because it costs less, I do the same thing. However, in my experience, only about 70% of uh, generic batteries work. So if your generic battery is not working, try changing over, spending the money and, and getting a brand name battery. After removing your battery, we can go deeper into the computer now. The first thing I'll shout out is your RAM right here and your solid state drive right here. So this is your memory right here and your storage. These are just metal guards that are over them. They're not screwed down. Uh, so you can just pry these up, wiggle them out. Uh, this one especially, it's stuck on with tape to your heatsink assembly. So instead of ripping that off completely, you can just fold it over back on top of your heatsink assembly to access your RAM. After folding that up and removing this one, this is what you're looking at. You have two RAM ports and one M.2 solid state drive port here. So to get the RAM out, guys, there's a spring-loaded metal arm on either side of each RAM stick. In order to get the RAM out, you would gently pry those apart from each other away from the ram stick the ram stick would then release in many cases it'll even pop up a little bit and then you can easily slide it out of this port down here to get the ram back in as you notice there's a long side to the ram stick and a short side so there's only one way you can plug that in the correct way it's kind of nice so you get that in there nice and flush and then you press down right here in the center those metal arms will snap onto it and hold it in place 
The solid state drive is held on by a single screw up top in the middle. You undo that screw, and then you can pull this out of this port right here. Now, I think in this computer, the maximum RAM was 64 gigabytes, which is a good amount for a computer like this. I'll have the RAM specs below in the description if you're looking for a replacement. And again, I'll have replacement and upgrade RAM and solid state drive suggestions in that link below as well. The next thing I'll shout out here is your CMOS battery. After you remove your main computer battery, it exposes your CMOS battery. This is wrapped in black electrical tape. It's held down by double-sided tape, so if you want to replace it, that can easily be popped off, and it plugs into the motherboard right here. So as usual, try not to pull on wires where you can help it. Put your fingernails or a pry tool on either grip on that plug and jimmy it out of that port if you're looking to replace it. As a side note, if you're here to find your CMOS battery to reset BIOS by unplugging it for uh, 15, 20 seconds, that will reset a lot of your BIOS system settings, but in most cases, it won't reset your BIOS password, just an FYI. Next thing I'll shout out is your speakers. You've got a speaker here on the left of my screen, and it runs by this black wire all the way down bottom into your right speaker on the right side of my screen. These speakers are not screwed down. They have these rubber washers on them right there for sound insulation, but you can just wiggle that right off of there and then it plugs into the motherboard right here. Same thing as your CMOS battery, try not to pull on those wires, but uh, Jimmy, that plug out of the port if you're looking to get at your speakers, and I'll have speaker replacements in the link below in the description. Next thing I'll shout out is your Wi-Fi card. It's under your fan right here. To get your Wi-Fi card out, you would unsnap these antenna wire. They're not plugs, they're just snaps, so they come up very easily. Uh, and then there's a single screw right here in the middle, kind of like your solid state drive. Once you undo that screw, the Wi-Fi card will come out. That is an Intel Wi-Fi card 6, um, model number AX201. It's a Bluetooth Wi-Fi combo. I'll have replacement options below in the link. The next thing I'll shout out is your fan, your heatsink assembly here. Keep in mind when you're accessing your fan, the antenna wire and the LCD cable, which runs, which both run down through this hinge assembly, they run through the fan right here. The LCD cable plugs in right there, guys. That's just a black pull tab. You just grab that pull tab and pull right up. That'll un unplug it. But these both run through your fan. So if you're accessing your fan, your heat sink, unrun those, and then you can take off your fan screws and you can release your fan to blow it out, vacuum it out, uh, clean it out, whatever you're in here to do. Uh, when cleaning it out, make sure to get your vent really well as long as you're in here. And if you're coming down to your CPU, you would unscrew these four screws right there. That would release your heat sink. And if you want to apply thermal paste, guys, I'll have a video link up top. I'll also include that in, in the description showing you how to reapply thermal paste correctly. You definitely want to clean off the old stuff and you don't want to put too much new thermal paste on. So I'll have a video link for that below in the description. Other than that, guys, you have your touchpad down here, all the various ribbon cables that come up from there. Um, you have your USB board here, your USB board here. Um, as a side note, these type of ribbon cable connectors, you see all these ribbon cables you have all over the place, um, over here, over here. These type of ribbon cable connectors, guys, there's a large probability of damaging these if you're too rough on them. These are very fragile, and if you break them, finding a replacement is very hard, uh, which would mean that your ribbon cables won't ever connect fully or securely, so you definitely don't want to break those. At the end of this video, I'm going to play a clip, a quick tutorial on, on how to manipulate these kind of ribbon cable plugs if that's why you're here. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope it helped you get into the computer safely, access whatever component you were looking to access. If you have any questions, check out the FAQs below in the description. It'll save you some time getting an answer. However, if you do need to leave me a question or comment, please feel free. I do try to get to those a couple times a day at least. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I look forward to seeing you on my next video, and I'll end the video now with that quick clip showing you how to operate those ribbon cable plugs. Okay, so to take a ribbon cable out of this kind of connector, first you have your ribbon cable here, you have the port on the motherboard, and then you have this retainer clip over here. This clip opens and shuts like a book cover. It opens from this side, and the hinges are on this side. So in order to get that up, be very careful. Take a small flat pry tool, 
slide it underneath and pop it up like that and then the ribbon cable can come out. After taking the ribbon cable out, I like to put it back down for safekeeping so it doesn't get caught on anything and rip. These are very, very breakable, these retainer clips. And if you break it, you're most likely not going to be able to find a replacement, um, in which case your ribbon cable won't be able to uh, secure down anymore. So be very careful. To get the retainer clip back in, you would pop it up again very carefully. You would slide the ribbon cable in nice and flush. It may take a few times if you're not used to it getting it flush and then just snap the retainer clip down and that's how you would operate that kind of clip.